Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for the latest episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones. And coming up on today's episode, the Broncos were back at practice again as they continue to prepare to face the L.A. Chargers this Sunday. We'll hear from all three coordinators, and Javante Williams was named this year's Ed Block Courage Award winner. All that and more coming up. As the Broncos continue to prepare for this AFC West showdown in Los Angeles on Sunday, we heard today from offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi and cornerback Pat Sertan as they both talked about what makes Chargers wide receiver Keenan Allen a special player. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he was hurt for a good portion last year, but, um, you know, just, you know, one of those guys that's always open. Um, as a quarterback, you can kind of hang on him because he's going to do something to get open and he's not going to fool you. Great hands, great route runner, super smart. Um, you know, he's kind of been doing it his whole career, and, and everyone who's played with him will tell you the same thing. It's just, you know, he's one of those special players. Yeah, he possesses a unique skill trait. Um, I believe they move him around to succeed in the offense. Uh, he's a very crafty route runner. He's very smart and decisive. So, you know, it was always going to be a challenge going up against him, you know, just a veteran receiver like that. Pastor Tan also talked about Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert and defensive coordinator Vance Joseph added to that, discussing how they game plan for someone like him. He could make, obviously, every throw on the field. Um, that's how talented he is. But um, what's underrated is, you know, his ability to make se second chance plays, you know, just by his feet uh, running the ball and maneuvering through that. So um, uh, we, we got a key out on that. And, you know, going against him is always going to be a challenge uh, each and every uh, time we play against him. I think taking him away, you know, I mean, he, he is obviously one of their best weapons. And every game plan we have, Troy, is, is to take away their best weapon and their best concept. You know, it, 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 it goes through him, you know. So that's definitely part of the game plan. You know, how we do it, I won't share that. But um, he is definitely their best player right now as far as numbers and targets and those things. So we'll have a plan to hopefully minimize him on Sunday. Joe Lombardi also went on to talk about Khalil Mack, who leads the league in sacks right now. I think the combination of, of his skill set, you know, some guys are just dangerous as a speed rush. Other guys got great power. You know, he's got it all. He's a really good run defender. He's just, um, you know, some defensive ends or edge players, you know, they've kind of got – uh, you know, one or two tricks up their sleeves. This guy's just a complete, complete, uh, complete game. And, um, you know, just being around him for one year, the way he practices, and he's just, you know, he's one of those all-timers as far as uh, his character, his practice habits, and the way he plays. It's just, uh, you know, he's one of the special ones. As the Broncos sit at 6-6 six and six with meaningful games left to play in the final few weeks of the season here, Pat talked about what it means to be playing in high-stakes football. It means a lot. Um, being able to play high-level football at this time of the month uh, is very important. Um, obviously, on this stretch, uh, you know, we got a couple tough games, you know, the key divisional games as well, too. So um, I think the main thing is um, – you know, winning our matchups um, and just going in each and every week looking to win these ball games. And running back Javante Williams was named the team's 2023 Ed Block Courage Award winner. He spoke today on what this honor means to him. Yeah, um, it's a great honor. Um, just seeing how the guys support me, just hearing Russ and, and uh, the general manager just talk about me, things like that. Um, and then just, just them seeing how hard I was working the whole time and just being able to come out and still play with the guys. I mean, it was really for them. I know it's a single award, but it was really for them. He also went on to talk about how much it meant to be selected by his teammates due to his approach and dedication to his rehab process. Yeah, no, nah, that is cool. Like I was, like I was telling, uh, um, just just hearing the players and everybody else talk about me and congratulate me in the locker room. Um, it just showed that they was, they might not have been with me the whole time, but they was keeping an eye out and just watching everything that was going on. So just being able to come back and help my guys and any way that I can on the field is always a good thing. Now joining me on today's episode of Broncos Now is fellow team reporter Phil Milani. Phil, two days in a row. I know. Thanks it's for joining Thursday, the show. It's great to be here. I know. Happy to have you on. Thank you. Phil, we just finished hearing from Javante Williams, the fact that he yeah. got the Ed Block Courage Award this year. I mean, how deserving is he of this? I oh couldn't my think gosh. of anyone else to get this award. Yeah, you know, I... It, 
it was uh, like so uh, sad and like tragic, like when he got went down yeah. uh, last year in that Raiders game because you had felt like Javante was about to be like this breakout star in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Then he got that injury, and you're like, I don't know how he's gonna return, you know. Right. But um, Javante's got that resiliency and that work ethic that um, you know he just uh, attacked his rehab yeah. and uh, he didn't miss a game this season, which is really amazing. Amazing. And uh, you heard uh, offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi today, you know, when he, before he took the job here in Denver or before he got to know Javante, he was asking people about him, you know, and people are like, hey, the injury he had, that's really like a two-year recovery. Right. So, like, don't expect too much from Javante this year. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he's defied the odds and uh, overcome uh, that injury and uh, really exceeded expectations this year. And, you know, the, we the weird thing is Javante doesn't have a rushing touchdown this I year. Know. But he's, get um, he's been like uh, running the ball really well. Right. So uh, yes. that's been like an identity for this. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the physical style that he plays with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like he just uh, gives defenders rides, you right. know, and uh, he's been doing that again this year. Mm -hmm. I feel like this word means a little bit more, you know, knowing that your teammates, your friends are the ones that choose him. Yeah, exactly. And they play like a little video, uh, yeah. and, you know, in front of the team and everything. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, I think it's just a cool deal that, uh, you know, all, all, all the guys like kind of get a chance to celebrate him uh, in a team meeting, you know. Yeah. And uh, and you put that video together this I year, did, Phil. yeah. So it's That's fun, special. you know, Russ yeah. talked and uh, George Payton talked mm -hmm. about it and just, uh, you know, I think that's a nice way that uh, they can celebrate him. And, you know, I think that when you're rehabbing like that, there's a lot of dark days, you know, Definitely. where you Definitely. you don't want to come in, you don't want to do deal with it. It's painful. Yeah. You're alone with the trainers and mm -hmm. stuff and you're not with your team. And Definitely. especially last year, you know, with the struggles the team went through, right. uh, you felt like you couldn't really help your guys out. So, uh you know, to to get through all of that and be uh, on the other side now uh, is a tremendous accomplishment. For sure. Very happy for Javante. Phil, so looking at a Sunday's matchup, you know, it's been a while since the Broncos have won a divisional road game. Yeah, I think 11 straight that they've lost. Yeah. That's... Three uh, straight years in Los Angeles. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. you got to get that turned around. Yeah. How do you think, you know, I mean, a lot of the guys on this team haven't been here throughout that whole stretch, of course, yeah. but, you know, how do you think they approach something like that, knowing that they haven't? Well, I think that uh, you just sort of view it like as any other game, mm -hmm. but I do think that there's a sense in the locker room this week just about they know what's on the line now, right. you know, with this home stretch here. They know that every single game is important. Yesterday, Justin Simmons said that it's a must win. Mm -hmm. uh, today in the locker room, Jerry Judy said essentially the same thing that, mm -hmm. like, look, all of these games are crucial, you know, right. and I think that, um, you know, uh, it's an AFC opponent that, you know, when at the end of the year, one of the big tiebreakers yeah. is your conference record. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the Broncos have lost a, a few games here in the AFC. So not only is it your division, but more importantly, it's the AFC um, so that, you know, at the end of the year, That's if there's some of these tiebreakers, you got to win against the AFC opponents. So uh, this is a big deal for the Broncos. And the strange thing is going to Southern California, there's so many Broncos fans there that it's not particularly like a very difficult environment. Right. You know, it's just that the Chargers have been a good team here for a few years with mm -hmm. Justin Herbert. Yep. You know, uh, uh, this year makers. he hasn't put up those huge numbers, but he's certainly a dangerous player. And uh, um, for whatever reason, the Broncos have not been able to go there and get a win. Yeah. Phil, I know we talked about uh, Chargers wide receiver Keenan Allen yesterday, but we just heard from Pat Sertan earlier in the show talking about him. I feel like that's definitely the matchup to watch this game. Yeah, I mean, Keenan Allen, especially with Mike Williams out right. uh, this season, Keenan Allen is sort of uh, Justin Herbert's go-to go guy. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, that's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Uh, certainly, Pat Sertan, we all uh, uh, breathed a sigh of relief last week when uh, oh that gosh. was not as serious an injury as yes. it uh, appeared to be initially yep. there. Uh, that field in uh, Houston, you know, the, the, the turf, turf there, it, uh, it can cause some injuries down there. And he said that his cleat kind of got caught in the turf a little yeah. bit and he hyperextended his yeah. leg. But uh, fortunately for Broncos fans and the Broncos, like uh, he, he wasn't, uh, yeah, he's okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a big part of this game, you know, uh, mm -hmm. just being able to minimize that uh, part of the uh, the Chargers offense. Right. And, uh, you know, Keenan Allen is that sort of uh, old wily veteran that knows, you know, the ways to get open. 
and uh, Pat is this younger cornerback who's like super athletic, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's going to be sort of a fun matchup to watch to see how yeah, uh, the okay. mental side of that uh, that is going to be good to watch. Yeah, Phil, sticking with Pat in this defense, the Broncos, they have five wins and just one loss this season when they recorded two or more takeaways. Oh, yeah, good and number there. They're one in five when forcing just one or fewer takeaways. So, yeah. you know, how do they get back to, you know, creating more of those turnovers? And, you know, I hope to see Pat get one here soon. Yeah, exactly. He said you just got to be patient and hopefully yeah. they, they come they your come. way here. Uh, of course, he had two in one game against uh, Herbert a couple right. of years ago. So yeah. uh, I do think that there, there is a focus for this Broncos uh, defense. You know, mm -hmm. takeaways has been a big priority for them they practice it in the week yeah. you know they do drills to rip the ball away and um, I think it's just coming out with that aggressive mindset you know and uh, really just like playing free and loose and like uh, being able to get after Justin Herbert a little bit I think sometimes when you play these types of quarterbacks where they've got supreme arm talent like right. Justin Herbert does yeah. he can make any throw out of there on the field mm -hmm. sometimes those guys tend to be like I bet I could squeeze it in there. I'm going to let this one. I'm going to try this one. So quarterbacks like that, you do have a, an opportunity there to maybe force them into some mistakes and uh, try and see if the you know the Broncos will certainly try and do that this week. Uh, get pressure on Herbert. Maybe uh, if the offense can get get things going right. for the Broncos, you put Herbert in some obvious passing situations. Then maybe you can uh, get some success in the takeaways. Mm -hmm. Talking about the offense, Phil, you know, I know Javante Williams, he was asked today how he hopes to see them kind of just improve this next week. What keys do you want to see them kind of step up? Is there anyone specific that you really want to see step up versus the Chargers? Well, I think the offensive line, there's yeah. like uh, maybe uh, some eyeballs on them a little bit after mm -hmm. what happened last week. Right. It, it had been uh, the, the strength of this team really had been that offensive line, especially yeah. going against the Browns. You know, with Miles Garrett, that was such a focus. They did such a great job in that game. Then yeah. last week against Willie Anderson, uh, you know, a rookie sensation. Mm -hmm. But he really, you know, was all over the place. Special teams making plays. He was after Russ all day long. Yeah. You know, even on that last play, that third down play, uh, the pressure uh, on Russ really impacted how that play ended up turning sure. out. So I think that that – I think they're going to take some pride here and uh, really show, like, hey – that's not our true self. So what you, as you saw against the Texans and, mm -hmm. you know, Khalil Mack is leading the NFL in sacks 15 right. this year. So that's going to be, I think a lot of people are going to be paying attention to that, right. but then overall for this offense, third downs, finding a way to just stay on the field is going to be crucial uh, because when you, when you don't convert third downs, it really takes away a lot from what you're trying to game plan uh, on the offensive side of the ball For because sure. you can't get into a rhythm. You never really have an opportunity to establish the running game. Mm -hmm. um, play action is so important for Russ. His numbers in play action versus non-play action are uh, very different. So mm -hmm. uh, it all sort of stems from being able to stay on the field. And so communication, details, yeah. uh, those things are going to be crucial for the Broncos in order to convert some of these big third downs. Yeah. Phil, I know Joe Lombardi talked today about, you know, being heavy on the deep ball. You know, we saw a lot of those explosive plays last week versus the Texans. You hope to see them kind of build on that, continue that, or well, you know, I think be more physical the run. in the run yeah. game. Yeah. I think that the Broncos formula to have success on the offensive side of the ball is running it mm -hmm. uh, and We've seen Russ be very successful with those little screen plays, yeah. those little flips to some IJP Ryan, mm -hmm. uh, things that are like, I think 30% um, uh, of Russ's passes since week seven, I think is the, is the stat, mm -hmm. have been behind the line of scrimmage. And so that's a big priority for this team is just right. to be able to take advantage in that area. And then, of course, hey, if you establish the running game, that's going to open up the shots da yeah. downfield. So uh, those are important uh, to be able to make sure that a defense is playing honest. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the core of this offense is from setting a physical tone, trying to establish the running game. And I think that that's where a lot of success, especially during that five game winning streak, it stemmed from that. Yeah, definitely. And I think we'll see a little bit more of that this weekend in LA. Phil, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much. Said Twice Thursday. in one week. Yeah. yeah. What a special it. treat. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for a game preview. I'll see you all then.